All right. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Todd Moore. I'm the administrator of the Solid Waste Management Bureau in the Waste Management Division at the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. Uh, first of all, thanks for coming out on a beautiful May evening to spend the evening with us. Um, I will be serving as the presiding officer for this hearing. For the record, it's Tuesday, May 8th at 5 after 6 p.m. and uh, this hearing is now open. We're at the Berlin City Hall Auditorium, 168 Main Street in Berlin, New Hampshire. This hearing is being held to receive public comment on an application for a solid waste permit modification submitted by the Androscoggin Valley Regional Refuse Disposal District, or the district, to the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. This application is for the district's landfill located on Beanbrook Road in Success Township. Under New Hampshire statute RSA 149M, and the department's solid waste rules, landfill owners and operators are required to obtain a solid waste permit. The existing landfill is currently under operating under such a permit. It's called a standard permit, previously issued by the department. The district is proposing to expand the landfill vertically beyond the capacity that it's currently permitted. Under New Hampshire solid waste rules, the district must apply for and obtain a new or modified solid waste permit for this proposed expansion. The district, the district has submitted such an application and it is under review by the department. And then the purpose of this hearing is to receive oral public testimony regarding that application. This hearing was originally scheduled for March 14th but the department postponed it due to inclement weather. Notice that the rescheduled hearing was published in the Conway Daily Sun, Coast County Democrat, and Berlin Sun newspapers on March 28th, April 4th, and April 12th, respectively. The hearing is being held on the date and at the time and location indicated in that notice, and copies of the actual notice are available on a table uh, where you entered the We have a number of people here from the department. Again, myself, Todd Moore, Administrator of the Solid Waste Management Bureau. Sitting up here with me is Paul Gildesleeve, an engineer with the Bureau and the primary technical reviewer for this application. On the front row here, we have Mike Nork, who's an environmental analyst who's helping us out with the hearing. In the back, who was at the table when you came in, is Paul Rydell. Paul's a hydrogeologist and runs the section that reviews the groundwater monitoring for this and many other solid waste facilities. And then we also have the director of the Waste Management Division, Mike Wimsat, in the back. <coughs> and then for representatives of the district, we have Sharon Gauthier, who's the executive director for the Androscoggin Valley Regional Refuse Disposal District. And then Paul Schmidt, who is a project manager from CM CMA Engineers, one of the consultants who helped prepare the application, and also Brad Sullivan, an engineer with CMA. Um, there is an agenda available. Uh, there's going to be three primary parts to the hearing. Uh, first of all, Paul Gildesleeve will give a brief presentation on um, the, what the department reviews relative to these types of ac applications um, and what criteria we use on making a decision whether to approve, deny, or approve with conditions. Paul will also briefly explain where we are in the application review process and what the next steps will be. Second, representatives of the district will provide a description of the actual project, the proposed landfill expansion for which they are seeking a permit. And after each of these presentations, we'll entertain you know, brief questions if people have clarifying questions on those presentations. After the presentations, we'll get into the meat of the hearing, which is where we want to hear from you, hear the oral testimony. <clears throat> if you would like to provide oral testimony, at the table at the back of the room are some yellow cards. 
if you fill that out with your name and address and hand it to anybody uh, here from the department, uh, Paul Rydell is back at the table, they'll get it to me and during the portion of the hearing where we're receiving oral testimony, I'll just call people up, people up in the order that I receive the cards. Now, if you do provide oral testimony, we'd like you to also give us the, uh, the comments in writing, if available. Um, it helps us make sure that we get them right. And then there's also an opportunity to submit comments. You don't have to speak here. You can just, just submit written comments to the department. And written comments, there's instructions on how to submit them at the back of the room in the hearing notice. And those written comments are due on or before May 15th, 4 p.m., close of business at DES. Um, one more note. If you do fill out one of these cards, uh, we'll have your, your name and address, and you will receive a copy of the final decision once it's issued. If you don't wish to speak tonight but still want to be on the list to receive notification of the final decision, there's a sign-up sheet in the back of the room. Give us your name, email address, mailing address, however you want to be contacted, and we'll make sure that you get a copy of the final decision once it's issued. A uh, couple of logistics. If there's an emergency, uh, there are exits the way you came in off Main Street to the side of us here. Uh, there are restrooms located a couple flights down kind of underneath us. Uh, please note that we are recording this hearing for the record. Um, we will have the audio recording available if anybody wants it. We can email it to them. If enough people want it, we may post it on our website. Um, any questions on how the hearing will be conducted? Doesn't look like it. So uh, we can get started with the presentations. First, uh, I'd like to invite Paul, uh, who will give a, uh, a brief explanation of why an ask, ex application for a solid waste permit is required for this project and what the department does in, in our review of that application. Thanks, Todd. Good evening once again. Uh, as Todd said, my name is Paul Gillishley. Uh, I'm from the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, Waste Management Division, Solid Waste Bureau, or NHDES. I'm the permit engineer for Mount Carberry Landfill. I'd like to describe the criteria and standards by which we evaluate whether the application you come here tonight to hear about is eligible for a permit and why we have the authority to make this evaluation. And New Hampshire was given statutory authority to administer a permit program for the solid waste management facilities through the law known as RSA, or Revised Statutes Annotated, 149M, which is the Solid Waste Management Act. Under this authority, NHDES has established rules known as the New Hampshire Solid Waste Rules, or rules. These rules include permitting and design requirements for solid waste land facilities, such as landfills. In accordance with the rules adopted by NHDES, the Permittee and your Scotland Valley Regional Refuse Disposal District, or the district, has submitted an application to NHDES to modify their permit for the Mount Carberry Secure Landfill. ABRD proposes to modify the landfill's permit by increasing its capacity by 710 cubic yards of solid waste volume, raising the landfill height 46 feet to 1,830 feet above mean sea level. This increased height and volume extends the landfill life expectancy by approximately 2.3 years, or 2025. Reviewing this application consists of two steps, a completeness determination and a technical review. The first step has already been accomplished. New Hampshire DES has deemed the Mount Carberry, land, Mount Carberry Landfill application complete. We are, we are now holding a public hearing on this application as required by the rules. Since the application is complete, a technical review of the application will begin. During this technical review, New Hampshire DES will use the application to ensure it addresses all the applicable rules such as meeting, meeting the landfill design requirements. The landfill design requirements 
include the Landfill Foundation, Landfill Liner, Leachate Collection Detection System, the groundwater and surface waters around the landfill, stormwater, decomposition gas control system, final capping system, and facility structures such as pump houses. Because this application is filling on top of existing waste, thereby increasing the weight and height of the landfill, a stability analysis and drainage calculations are especially important. The application must include both the positive and negative impacts that proposed facility modifications will have, why the proposed changes are necessary or desirable, and show the facility modification provides the public benefit. Public benefit from RSA 149M3 includes three requirements. It includes the short and long-term need for a solid waste facility of the proposed type, size, and location to provide capacity to accommodate solid waste being generated within the borders of New Hampshire. Second, it includes the ability of the proposed facility to assist the state in achieving the, impl the implementation of the hierarchy and goals under RSA 149 M2 and M3. And third, it includes the ability of the proposed facility to assist in achieving the goals of the state and solid waste management plan. And more and more solid waste management plans submitted to and approved by the department under RSA 149, M24, and M25. Besides showing public benefits, the application must also amend, must also amend applicable documents, such as the operating plan, the closure plan, and the financial insurance plan, as well as the design plans prepared by and stamped by a professional engineer licensed in New Hampshire. New Hampshire reviews these technical aspects of the application to ensure they meet the requirements of the rules. This process can be iterative, while the applicant addresses NHDES's questions. NHDES has a goal either 120 days following the receipt date of the complete application, or 30 days after the public hearing, whichever is longer, to make a decision in writing on this application for a permit modification. The applicant and all persons and entities to whom the applicant was required to provide a copy of the application will receive a copy of this decision. A response to public comments will be included with that decision and sent to all those who made the public comments. Finally, this application is only for conceptual design. If granted, an additional application or applications with final designs will be required by NHDES. Construction of these final designs must proceed in accordance with the standard engineering and construction practices and, are, and must be overseen by a qualified professional engineer. So, this is a lot of information in a short amount of time, but do you have any questions on this? So All right, if that. there's uh, no questions for Paul for this, so I guess we'll. Um, now invite the district up to provide a description of the actual project. Thank you, Paul.
communities that are part of the district and their authority is given under um, statutes RSA 53B. Um, and, uh, and as shown on the screen, uh, the communities within the district are um, the city of Berlin and then the towns of Dummer, Errol, Gorham, Jefferson, Milan, Northumberland, Randolph, Stark, and unincorporated um, locations within Coast County represented by, by the county. Um, so each of those municipalities are part of the district. Um, each municipality uh, designates their own uh, representative to be on the board of the district and they make the ultimate decisions for the district and Chair Gauthier is the um, executive director, uh, follows, follows through with their, with their direction. Um, so if you live in one of these communities and you're represented through your municipality, through their call, and they select in these communities, select their own representative in a different way, um, that's how you're represented by, by the district. Um, the district was formed in 1990, um, and, it, and, and it, on its initial formation, it built and now owns and operates a materials recycling facility. Um, that covers the entire district is located in Berlin on Route 10. Um, and you now all residents within the district can utilize that facility directly and, and in each of the, commu the communities, they all collect recyclables their own way and bring it to that facility where materials are recycling, recycled. And they also manage some of the special waste light bulbs and tires and um, um, construction demolition debris. And then it is also a transfer station um, for some of those other some of those materials. And that's and that was um, upon its initial formation that was the district primary goal. Um, and then the district bought the Mount Carter Landfill, which we're here today to discuss um, in December of 2002. Um, as many of you likely know, the, the landfill was originally constructed um, by the paper mill um, it was constructed in the late 1980s and it was originally constructed for disposal of waste from the mills, both pulp and the paper mill. Um, and, uh, and that was its initial purpose. It's, it's a double line secure landfill. It has two liners underneath it. Um, and, the, and, and what's in between gets monitored, um, which is the current, the, the entire landfill. The, it was constructed when those rules were developed, so so the entire landfill meets all of those all of the current standards in essence. Um, um, there are some landfills out there that that whole section that, that don't meet the current standards, but this this one does. Um, and as I said, initially it was it was waste from the mill, which was primarily sludge. Um, and early on, they did started taking some municipal waste, and fairly early on, they started taking with weight municipal solid waste from the district. Um, and and then when the mill went bankrupt, the landfill got put up for sale and the district decided to buy it. And the district, you know, municipalities decided to kind of keep that under municipal the goal I think was, you know, was, um, keep it under municipal control. Um, so as I said, the district purchased it in 2002. Um, there's approximately 67 acres that are currently developed as a as a landfill. Um, it was built in stages, and we reference stages one and two. Um, there's the original permitted application was um, a total of 113 acres, and I'll show you a map that kind of that shows this. Um, and of that 67 has been developed, and the rest of it is. Um, part of what was originally planned to be developed and um, is under the original permit. Um, and that's, that is what was always been called phase two north. Um, and, and this actual application is to, is to go higher over top of what's there before going out. Um, and if this was approved, then, then the district will go out with the, what was already always planned. Um, we wanted to know there is on the property um, an area that's been called Phase 3 North, which has been identified, which um, meets criteria for expansion of the landfill, um, and that's an additional 28 acres. 
Um, at this point, that's far enough in the future that it's that it's not um, that there's kind of no activity in that regard. But but the landfill has um, the property has um, quite a bit of ability to expand it in, in you know for a long time in the future. So the municipalities for a long for a long time in the future. Um, the landfill takes municipal solid waste under the definitions of the state, um, so typical trash, um, it takes quite a bit of construction and dungeons and debris. Um, it does still serve the mill, the paper mill, um, under an agreement with them, both their sludge and their other waste, which is a um, you know, critical part of their, their operation. Um, the landfill has a, um, under the previous permitting, um, has some limitations on how much waste they can accept, uh, which averages over the life of it, um, 305,500 cubic yards per year on average over the life of it. They currently um, um, take a little bit less than that. Uh, that corresponds to the, they're currently taking in a range of 260,000 tons a year. Um, um, it is located in success. Um, the entrance, if you drive by on Hutchinson Street in Berlin. Um, so the facility infrastructure that's there now is the, the um, you know, as part of the landfill infrastructure, there is an active gas collection system um, which we expand every year to pull up full landfill glass, um, gas. Um, initially that was sent to a flare a couple of years ago, the district built a pipeline to the dorm paper mill, um, and now the gas either goes to the flare and is burned off on site, or um, is gone close to the paper mill and is burned in their boiler and used to, for heat for steam in the, in the paper mill. Um, there's a, we take all, everything, this is a double line landfill, so there's liners in the bottom and it rains that lands in the landfill, it goes through the waste. And that, that's what's termed leachate that comes out the bottom. Um, and the leachate here is sent to the um, directly via um, pipeline to the city of Berlin's um, water pollution um, control facility, the wastewater treatment plant, um, and it's treated there. Um, silly, otherwise, that scale house at the bottom, bottom of the hill, uh, maintenance drive is up by the landfill. Space for office for, for personnel. Um, there is a stormwater management system that includes one large pond and, and a series of smaller ponds um, to manage stormwater from the site in accordance with, with DS requirements. Um, and there's also a, a monitoring system that requires monitoring for both the groundwater and surface water. Accordance with the yes, um, requirements. Um, and the property also has um, sand gravel and borrow pits that are used for, um, for materials for construction and for covered soils. Um, so I just give you an overall view. Just if you, this is actually Google view. So I don't hear.
the properties that are owned by the district. Uh, it's it's some multiple lots, some were, were purchased in the original um, purchase, and some of them were have been um, purchased since. Um, and, the, and actually, the, these darker shaped areas here are lands that have been put in conservation um, that was part of various permittings for the land over time. So there's some land up there that's been put in permanent um, in conservation, including a good section of Um, so the current landfill um, was uh, the base landfill has been constructed in phase one and two, and that was split into different phases. The lower the lower parts were filled first, and and we this is like and you'll see some figures in a minute. Um, either some people compare it to a pyramid, and some people compare it to a three-letter cape, but the lower the lower part was filled first, and then we're in the, the kind of middle. Um, and what's currently permitted is, is this middle section, and what we're looking to add is the top of the pyramid. Um, we'll have some graphs here in a minute to, to make that a little more clear. Um, so what's currently permitted, and what was, and this was what was permitted when the landfill was originally uh, proposed, um, has a maximum elevation of. 1,784 feet, and that becomes relevant when we talk about what's proposed. Um, and then what's currently permitted, fully permanent and operational, um, has a projected life through 2022 to 2024. And then, um, depending on how much weight she comes in and how, how what compaction levels are. And then, if, and then absent this modification that we're requesting, um, the plan would be to go to phase three, which is a horizontal expansion, um, which is part of the original footprint. That's approximately 46 um, acres. And actually, that's under current, currently under design um, because these things take a long time to design and get through all of the permitting process. So we're actually currently under design on that. Um, and that has a under current waste um, acceptance rates of an additional 25 years of, of capacity. Um, and as I talked before, the, the phase two north has possible future additional land for expansion is about 28 acres, uh, potentially about 4 million cubic yards, which is about, which corresponds to about 12 years of additional life beyond that. And that's, that's kind of the you know, future, but we did want to, we do want to keep that. Um, and this, this shows, this is the aerial view of the landfill and, and the phase one here area is, is Shown in the um, in red, the red outline that kind of does make phase one, phase two, which are the two current operations. This photo actually is three or four years old, so it's a little different now. But um, in the, what you see in the picture, the the black is a um, for cover. They're not required to do this, but they have to cover the landfill uh, both every day, and then areas that have gotten waste additional cover. And uh, the primary requirement of that for the rules is, is, is soil material. Um, but here they've also put down um, what we call um, cover liner. It's, a, it's the same material actually that forms of auto liner. And they put that down and it, it, and it has a couple of functions. It's, um, one, it actually uh, helps, helps with, um, with odors. And, and this was initially started being used back in back quite a few years ago when the owners were, um, were um, from one actually they ended up before us all the project, but quite significant for a period of time before they put that gas in. So, um, and it, and it, were, it, it works actually very effectively as a, as a cover material. So that's the black you see in the, the at the time this picture was taken, this was the active area where waste was being um, deposited. It's, it's moved now. But, um, and this is the future phase three footprint that's been permitted as uh, part of the original <laughs> permit. And this is that expansion area to the phase three north that's been identified. And um, and actually this this light blue line here, this is the area that and you can almost see this the the pyramid forming here. And the area within blue is the area that we're looking to to go higher on that and handle for head and kind of get into more details for that. 
Any questions at this point? Just a couple questions again. What percentage of the land is covered by that line now? Um, right now it's a little bigger than it's shown there. Um, I don't know the percentage off the top of my head, but it's it's um, it's clearly more than half. I'd say it's in the range of three quarters. Right, right now the area is still just with operations, but it's, it's, um, it's a little larger than what's shown there. Um, they try to keep that as small as we can because it, it also reduces the quantity of utilities that's generated, which we pay for disposal with that. The district pays for disposal with and, uh, at the landfill, so we try to get them on the staff. So, okay, with that, I'm going to hand over to Brad to. My name is Brad Sullivan. I am a project engineer with Seaman Engineers, a consultant to the districts. Um, I'm going to kind of run through the city's 12 development and some other details that are in the application. Uh, as Paul described earlier, the city's 12 expansion is a vertical expansion, so it's above the current uh, footprint that's already constructed instead of a horizontal expansion would be outside of the new footprint. Um, city's 12 would be just continue to be filled above the current uh, Permitted stage five and six grades. Um, actually, currently the, the land was operating in uh, stage five and six and ten and eleven just because the, the location in the, in the airspace the way that it's laid out. Uh, stage 12 will provide um, about 710,000 cubic yards of disposal capacity on our airspace, and that kind of uh, correlates to 2.3 years of operations. Um, the, the change in height. With the new, uh, with the proposed expansion, would be about 46 feet higher than already permitted. Um, bring it up to elevation uh, 1830. Um, here's a table that summarizes the, uh, the current and proposed landfill uh, uh, capacities or airspace capacities. Uh, phase one and two will have provided about 25 years of life, about 7.7 million yards. Um, that's currently with the, the 66 or 60. 66 and a half acres of landfill that's already constructed. Stage 12, like I said, will be about two, uh, 2 3 years of life or 710,000 cubic yards. So there'll be no additional footprint for that development. Um, like I said, be just above the, the landfill that's already there. Phase 3 will be to the, to the east of the existing landfill, and that will be, could be about uh, 47 acres um, and provide approximately 26 years of life with disposal capacity. Um, and that, the potential areas of North Paul to talk about uh, is around 27.9 acres and could be around 4 million yards for 12 plus years of life. Uh, like I mentioned before, the, there's no construction required for stage 12, but you just continue the same landfill operations uh, vertically as they progress higher. Um, there's no other initial infrastructure required, there's no mining system, there's no uh, uh, Landfill gas collection system initially needed no headers or leachate sewers. Um, it just continues to, to be constructed by the plant going above where they already are. Uh, by filling in stage 12, they would defer a future construction project for a landfill cell, um, which would be phase 3, which is already permitted. Um, in general, the landfill operations would not change from how they currently are. Uh, it would be no significant changes to truck traffic on site or through town, or um, no change in the average uh, annual acceptance rate of, of waste. Uh, here's a large figure to kind of situate um, the, what the college is kind of showing in, and I'll try to trace it a little bit. So this, this again is a few years older, but you can kind of see um, currently, well, when this was taken a few years ago, I'm tracing the red was the uh, extent of the, the break slope so anything towards the center was was a uh, um, more level and flat, and the outer slopes were, were steeper slopes there. Um, so stage 12 again, as Paul showed in the previous slides, would be within that area, within that program. Um, here's a figure showing the um, the current maximum uh, permanent grades. The the, the gray shading is outer slope that's about three to ones uh, and the, the inner layer shading would be a flatter slope um, that's around five percent 
and um, the, uh, the, the dark lines that kind of serpentine go around the, the lintel is the, the current um, uh, truck traffic road that gets to the active base. The ones in the north is uh, another smaller road that's used by um, site traffic, contractors, um, and other equipment. Um, here's a figure showing, uh, a site plan showing the development um, was stage 12. The, the red dash line shows that same limit that would be the filling um, above the currently permitted uh, capacity. Um, again, the, the, the gray is um, a steeper slope as a tan color never continues that steep, that steep slope to match that same slope to a higher elevation. And the uh, later same color would be uh, again a flatter slope, more like a 5% grade. The, the, the um, hollow road gets extended around onto the top here and it connects with the other um, existing landfill uh, equipment road uh, to the north. And we would construct another one to the south, which um, would be for access from the, uh, the maintenance garage, which is just adjacent to that entrance. Um, here's a cross section kind of showing that three layer cake of here that this hall was talking about. The, uh, the lower, um, I should hold a second, the, the bottom here is the, is the um, elevation of the baseline system. Actually, for reference, the, uh, the north side is to the left and the south side is to the right. Um, the, the darker shade toward the lower is the existing waste that's in place currently. Um, the next area above it is that middle layer, which is the stage five and six air capacity. And the, the top layer is the proposed stage 12 layer capacity, so we're just going higher. Here's another section. Um, I believe it's east to west. Uh, no, sorry, west to east here. Um, so in the same uh, general existing waste proposed uh, permanent air capacity that's unused, unused at this point, and then the proposed stage 12 layer capacity above that. Um, as they, as, or if uh, stage 12 were to be constructed and, and filled, um, landfill gas collection uh, infrastructure would be extended into that. Um, it would be essentially the same um, construction rate and, and sequence that would be going in now, just continuing to stage 12. Um, it gets constructed about once a year as waste gets filled. Um, and it consists of vertical collection wells, horizontal collection wells. Uh, conveyance piping, so header and lateral piping, and then landfill gas flow control. Um, you can see in the next slide here, um, here's a, a master plan for stage 12, which shows a series of uh, landfill gas collection uh, header piping um, with some laterals going to uh, vertical wells. The little dots here are actually all vertical wells in there. Um, uh, space about 100. So Part, um, it's a pride coverage. Um, you can actually see the existing ones are already in place and they show the radius influence of the, the lighter shaded circles that are over there. Um, so as you go higher here, there will be minimal or marginal uh, visual impacts um, due to the height of the landfill. Um, currently, you can see the landfill in, in various parts of town, it's the, the northwest section of town. Um, generally, the landfill is screened by the, the natural topography of Mount Carberry and other um, uh, lower uh, non-mean area province across from the, uh, the Hall Road. Um, the, uh, one of the, the, the things that we could commit to here, or would commit to, is that we fill the, the waste on the outside slope um, first, and once that reaches height, on the back side of it afterwards to keep equipment out of view as much as possible. Um, as this gets higher, you would also, it will not um, be more prominent in the background of the Mabusic uh, range, um, which the application code is fast. Um, again, just to kind of resituate you, um, here's the facility. You can see phase one on the west, phase two in the east, over a permanent phase three of that, which is unbuilt, um, potential phase three north, so the north of phase three, and then that blue line within the, the facility footprint is the, the limit of stage 12. Um, and with that, I guess I'll turn back to uh, Todd. Yep.
Thank you, Brad and Paul. Any uh, questions for Brad or Paul, or our other Paul here in the presentations? Does, yes, in the back. I was curious about the, uh, the gas. Did you guys say it was going to American paper tissue, or there's a pipeline? I'm sorry, could Are you repeat? The gas from the uh, landfill? Yeah. It's going to work. Um, so, so the three or four years ago, the district built a pipeline from the landfill site to um, the paper mill, which is now Gorham uh, Pulp and Paper. What is it? Gorham I don't know. Paper. Gorham Paper and Tissue, which is the which is actually the which is the paper mill in, in Gorham. And so there's a direct pipeline between the landfill and it goes up over the river on the bridge to their, um, and extends to their boiler, and they co-fire natural gas and the landfill gas in their boiler. So when that's operational, that's actually where the landfill the gas goes. Because the landfill gas actually has, it's, it's about half the heating content of natural gas. It's, it's, it's actually not that far from, um, it's, it's got high methane content, which is um, and so yes, the, the landfill produces gas, um, and the active gas, the active system collects that. And and if and if the system to the mill on both ends is working, then it's then it's sent, then all of the gas is sent to the mill. And if that system's down for whatever reason, then it's sent to um, a flare where it's burned. It actually burns. If, if you like this stuff, it, it just burns by itself. Um, so it's it's. Um, so it's flared on the site, and that's that's the standard practice for. Well, my, my question really was: like, so, does, do they pay for this gas, or do they just um, benefit from it? The, the there is an agreement between the mill and the district, and they do pay for the gas. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Thanks, Paul. Um, we did uh, receive. We have three. Yellow cards, and I'll start calling people up in a moment. If and at any point you uh, decide that you want to add testimony, you can see Paul at the back, fill out a yellow card, get it to me. Um, when I call your name, uh, please step up to the microphone here so that we can all hear you clearly and begin by stating for the record your name, address, and affiliation, if any. If you're here representing a company, if you're representing yourself, then name and address is fine. Uh, and then you may proceed with your comments. Um, while the focus of this part of the hearing is for us to hear your comments and testimony, we understand that some of you may have actual questions for us. Um, we'll do our best to answer questions here, uh, recognizing this, you know, it's a complex facility. Uh, we may have to defer some, but if you do, as part of your testimony, ask questions, even if we can't answer it tonight, it will be entered as a public comment that we will consider in, uh, in making the final decision. So with that, uh, I'll call the, our first card. Looks like Mark. I see, what's your last name, Mark? It's Mark Kennedy. Kennedy. All so right. I, I apologize. I wrote the card at the beginning because they said if you had any questions, but the questions I've had were all answered through the presentation. So I don't have anything to add. All right. Thank you, Mark. Uh, next, Danielle Warner. Hi there. Um, oh. I just wanted to. Um, oh, could you uh, could you just say your name uh, so that Danielle the Warner in your address? Uh, Four seven three Branson. Thank you. I live way at the top of the hill, pretty close. All right. Up there. Um, I bought my home in 2015, uh, January, and that whole summer the odor was just horrendous. Um, I knew about the landfill there before I bought the home, but I didn't know there were any odors or issues like that. So, you know, I bought the house and I just went through that summer having these horrible odors. Um, didn't really do too much about it. I guess towards the end of the summer I started to call to complain it was just horrendous. I mean, it was all hours of the day, uh, middle of the night. Um, nothing really got done. The next 
next year rolled around, we're in 2016 now, started all over again. The summers are the worst. The summers went really, it just makes you sick to your stomach to smell it. Um, so I started complaining again. Uh -huh. Nothing really was getting done. The gentlemen were coming out at all hours of the night. I was told to call them. Uh, whatever hour they were coming out at 1, 2 in the morning, you know, when they would um, just kind of go out there and stand with me and well, I don't smell it. So I would say, well, come on in my house and step outside and open the door and it just kind of gets you like a wall. So I really couldn't do too much there. Um, so then I, had, I went upon myself to file a complaint to Concord. And Concord, um, what's his name? Ed, Edward Perdido. Yep. He was uh, the one that had was, got a response from. He actually came up here. I worked here at City Hall at the time. And he met with me and another one of my co workers who lives nearby and uh, you know, wanted to know what was going on. So I told him. And later that year, we're still in 2016, amazingly, a new flare was put in because of the complaints. He said there was issues. So why did it take two years of complaints to, and me having to go to Concord to finally get something done? This year, last year was my first summer, I was able to actually open my windows and enjoy my new home. Um, I can still smell it occasionally, it's just really faint. It's not a bothersome like it used to be. But my concern is what's gonna happen when we add six stories of trash on top of what's already there. You know, how long is it going to take to get another flare built? Or what if the warm paper mill shuts down? Where does that gas go? You know, things like that concern me. Okay. Thank you. Next, I'd like to call Darren Allen. My comments and concerns are about the same thing. Okay, so you'd like to read it? He lives in the same pod. Yep, and reiterate the, the same concerns. There, there are still issues with gases. Okay. So, in, in what I heard was there were significant issues there. Last summer was not as intense as 2015 16, but it's still there. Correct. Yep, all right. Thank you. I just, I just, you know, it's, it's my, I suspect that it's not going to get any better by you increasing the, the volume of this landfill. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. No, and, 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 yeah, as Danielle noted, what would this do to that, the existing situation? How long would it take to fix it if I start getting that severe odor again? You literally cannot lay there in bed at night and sometimes you're going to open it. You, you wake up, you go in the night, and the stomach's just rolling okay. and brown, you know, just, Do you want to add more to that? I think if you want to add more, maybe we could get you to come up to the microphone. If uh, you're I'll welcome to. Any further questions or comments, I'll okay. send right here. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. And we have another card here from Natalie Cordo. Did I pronounce your last name correctly? Yes. Oh. I'm Natalie Cordo, 630 Trudell Street. I am the closest one to this one. We've been there for more than 15 years now, and yes, it's been a big problem, but some of the issues have been addressed. But again, like they said, it's taken a lot of time. Now, when you guys are going higher and bigger, what is the noise capacity going to be? Now, what, what are the hours of operation up there right now? Because I hear trucks going up there at 5.30 a.m. It echoes down to my house, I hear it all day, I've heard trucks jake breaking, 
coming down the hill. There's big issues. Now if you're going to go higher, what's that noise? You're not going to have the trees as buffers. That noise, that beeping, those trucks, those 18 wheelers is a nuisance. And as far as the odor, yes, I've had to redo my laundry more than once before because I've taken it from the washer to the dryer and when I've taken it out of the dryer, it's stunk that I have to go to my mother's house. Yes, it has been better, but yes, it is not the best thing. So it is a problem, and I think you're going higher, six stories high, the noise is going to be a problem. And I won't deal with it. You're going to get a lot of phone calls. Thank you. Right. Now we have a call from uh, Paul Bernier. Please start with your, your name so we can get it recorded. Okay. Is it? Paul Bernier. I live on Emmon Hill and I bought the, the property up there. And the problem is, is the smell and everything else. That's it, you know. But what's worse, you get that place all covered up, right? Isn't that, is that correct? But it, when you get rain, heavy rain, where's the water going? You're uphill there. There's a funnel. They come right down on Blair Street, Trudell, all those streets, they're getting flooded. Kent Street last fall get flooded. The culverts are not big enough. I worked for this public works for 40 some years. I've never seen flooding like we had last fall. I washed the whole road on Lemon Hill, Grafton Street, and the other streets, and almost knocked the, the garage off the foundation on. Uh, one of those streets, I forget the number, uh, co-ops, on co-ops. That's, you know, when you get a lot of rain, it comes down. You notice on your roof or your house when it rains, a lot of water comes down, right? Mm -hmm. And it just from our house. Now, you get a hundred acres there, covered up, all that water coming down, it makes a mess, washes all the streets. They're lucky not, they're not getting sued for that. People don't realize that that's what's happening. Really bad. Okay. So if you want to go bigger, you're going to have more of a problem, you know? I can't see it. You got all kinds of properties, you can go further back and it won't be so so dangerous. I know you I don't know why they designed that. They're up on the hill, they put a landfill on top of the hill. Everything washes down, right? not practical. That's all I get to say. Alright, thank you for your comments. Uh, I'll just add that um, stormwater control is one of the design parameters that we're charged with reviewing. Um, so we'll definitely look into the comments. And I recognize last fall we had some unprecedented events. So, But thanks for your comments. Now, I don't have any more yellow cards. Uh, is there anyone else who wishes to step up to the microphone and provide oral testimony? Looks like we may have one. Joanne Bernier. All right, thank you. My name is Joanne Bernier. I live on 480 in Men Hill. Been there for a long time. And of course, uh, if we'd have known back then that there was going to be a landfill behind our property, we'd have never bought. We love where we live. We have almost 15 acres of land. And uh, the thing is. I'm concerned about it's, if you increase the height 
that most likely will cause a problem as far as odor eventually. But our property with the landfill coming closer and closer, our property value is going to be worth nothing. We're paying plenty of property taxes up there. And uh, um, what about people that have wells? Uh, maybe you have a way of containing your trash, I'll say. But who's to say that eventually some of that could not seep into the ground and eventually affect your wells? Then where the heck do we go with that? So this is what's in the back of my mind, among other things that other people have said. So as a property owner, it can get a little nerve-wracking at times, you know? So that's all I have to say, and uh, I hope that the outcome will be good for everybody. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thanks for your comments. Another thing up there too, you know, the leach field. You know, it's only a pipe that big coming down from the pollution plant. Every summer I see the pumpers pumping for a whole month up there. Pumping and trying to get that free because it's plugged up. Now you want to go bigger. I can't see it. It's not impossible. And You'd have to have a 6 inch, uh, 36 inch pipe up there and go, go down there to the pollution plant. Not a 10 inch pipe. Okay. Um, I just I want to make sure that I fully understand your comment. And I know we're, we're probably not going to get it on the recording. So you're talking about the pipe that carries the leachate from the landfill to the wastewater treatment plant. Um, you're concerned that that doesn't have the capacity to handle all of it. They get pumpers from Little Falls of uh, six, seven months, uh, weeks uh, pumping, trying to get that fluid out. All right, and uh, that was it for people who want to provide oral testimony. Uh, yeah. One more. Oh, we've got one more. Sorry. Yeah.
So why are we taking trash from everywhere else? Let them dig up their own problems. We got enough of our own, you know. But, but I don't, can't see why we got trucks coming from New Jersey, New York, everywhere. It's like, I can't believe it. Everybody being money hungry just to fill the yard up. You know, it's all right to have a waste disposal, but I think it should have lasted a whole lot longer than it did now. Why is it full today? Because we're taking trash from everywhere else. Right. Do you want to talk a little bit about the service area? So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Try. Damn, that's heavy. <laughs> you can well, take it just wait. Yeah, no, 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 you have to turn it on, but. Hello? Uh, well, this landfill is owned by the district, which should, includes nine towns, I believe, and, and one incorporated county. Um, and, and that's and that's and that's primarily the uh, the uh, the user of the landfill. Um, it's it's also a commercial landfill, and so as a commercial landfill, it has an unlimited service area. So it, it serves both the district, the nine towns. Um, the unincorporated county, and maybe other surrounding areas, but it also is open to receiving trash from, from anywhere else, New Jersey or Maine or Vermont, um, anywhere that, that they, can, they can receive it, because they're, they're a business, and they need to, they need to accept the system. Well, I don't know. I, the way, I don't know. I, I guess I, the way it was proposed to me, when I, the way I understood it, when they first did the paper, or the people in this town understood it, it was supposed to be for the surrounding community. If it was going to be commercial, okay, with the commercial business around here, okay. But like I said, now I know they're running like a business, but it's the business for everywhere. You know, from wherever, New York, New Jersey. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, so. So basically, basically we got bamboozled <laughs> to say, you know, why we got trash, why we, we, why we want trash from everywhere else up here. I can see taking trash for our, we'll, we'll take our trash, we'll deal with it. Why we should take trash from everywhere else? Money. Money. Yeah. No? Mom and so. to make money, and I can understand that. Well, can, if, uh, I want to make sure that, that well, I know we, that we are able to record and, and hear everything that happens, so we have plenty of time, I think, for people to continue to come up. I see someone who wants to step up, so let's uh, let this gentleman finish, and then we can have some more people, folks come up. That was one of my questions. Why the trash is coming from everywhere? Well, apparently that's okay, I guess. But the way I, I understood it, and a lot of people understood it in this town, it was just supposed to be, supposed to be around the surrounding communities. I guess we misunderstood it. You know, like I said before, it was mainly for the water, my father's water, drinking water, water for clothes, everything. We got our own water supply. If that goes bad, what are we going to do? Then you get the odor. You already got people complaining about the odor as it is now. Now they go four, six feet higher, and obviously the odor is going to be worse. So, I don't want to be living like that. That's my story. <laughs> thanks for hearing me out. All right, thanks for coming. Thank you. All right. Uh, I uh, saw a hand. Looks like some. Yeah, if you want to come up. My name is Darren Allen, 473 Grafton Street. Um, along with this last concern there about the commercial use of the dump, mm -hmm. I was curious to know as to why this wasn't presented in the presentation. I didn't know. I didn't wasn't even aware of that fact. That that's uh, that's a concern of mine as well. You know, it seems like this dump is driving a lot of people's uh, property values down while our taxes are going up. And, and that, that just doesn't seem fair to me. Okay. Um, Unless I missed it. Was it, was it presented in the I'm presentation? I'm not because sure if I, it was. I saw nothing about commercial use. I, yep. I don't remember seeing anything about commercial part, the part yeah. of that. And actually, that's, that's a good point. We'll make sure in the future, at least in our presentation, because that's one of the key criteria when we're classifying facilities is what is their service area. And this is currently permitted as an unlimited service area, which is essentially a commercial landfill that can accept waste from anywhere. It just it leads me to believe that you're trying to hide things from us now. Yeah. I can, that's my that was definitely, it, absolutely not, not the case. We would 
we don't try to hide anything. I apologize if there was an oversight and that wasn't clear. Uh, but like I said, this is currently permitted as an open service area. Uh, there's no proposal to change that. And I would say that one of the reasons that that classification is important is when we're reviewing applications, particularly applications for expansion, as Paul noted, part of that analysis is to review whether or not meets the public benefit requirements in our statute. And the, there's a distinct difference between a limited service area or like a local service area and a commercial landfill when doing that analysis. So we do consider the fact that it accepts waste from um, essentially anywhere. All right, thank you. Um, I, did you, would you like to speak again? Well, Andrew? my is in there. Oh, in would you mind place. coming up to this microphone, please? Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> people, like he was saying, they come from different areas, and they unload what they have to, and of course they charge by the tonnage, and they're making money. That's what they're in business for. But all these people are bringing their trash in. It's not affecting their property value. It may not affect their water supply down the line. It may affect ours. Who knows? Time will tell. So, and property taxes are high enough in Berlin because we don't have enough industry. So, you know, when you really think about it, it's corny, but we're between a rock and a wall here. And that's all I have to say. And maybe by going higher, maybe the, uh, the odor will increase, time will tell. That's another concern. I'm sure that everyone in this room is concerned about all these issues also. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. Oh, we have one more question. Just a quick question. So the commercial aspect of the landfill, where do those revenues go? Where did the is the district a nonprofit organization? Is it a subsidiary of the state? Or is it a private owned company? All right. I'm going to say that like, where the revenue actually goes isn't something that we would review, but I think Sharon would like to say a couple words. Uh, and again, Sharon got there, the executive director for the district. I guess the first thing I'd like to clarify is we do not have any waste coming in from New York or New Jersey. Our waste comes in from all over the state of New Hampshire, different areas, some Vermont communities, and we have customers in Maine. We have a landfill cover product that comes in from Massachusetts. Beyond that, we have not accepted New York, New Jersey waste. Um, the district is a quasi-municipal, and all of the revenues from uh, the tipping fees cover all of the cost to do whatever is necessary to maintain Mount Carberry and to have funds available for future expansions, landfill gas expansions, all of the expenses. The district funds are held by the district, which is a governmental entity. And all of the member municipalities, as was explained earlier, are members. You've already gone through the whole thing, but each one of the communities that are members all have a district representative to the board, and that board meets monthly. Our meetings are uh, published. Uh, we have a website. Uh, we have monthly meetings at our district office, and any questions you have, please don't hesitate. Our meetings are open to the public, and our offices are up on 12th Street. Uh, we are in the condo building on 12th Street near the bridge. Uh, if you ever want to stop by, you ever want any additional information, please do not hesitate. If any of you would like a tour of Mount Carberry, we would be more than happy to give you a tour and show, the, show you the actual facility.
there anyone else who would like to provide oral testimony? Not at this time. Well, seeing that there's no one else who wishes... Oh, we have one more. Oh, would you mind yeah, coming up and, and stating your name? Because from experience, trying to recreate these from the recording you know, gets confusing. Thank um, you. I'd just like to know, um, when we have a complaint, what's the process of that complaint? You know, what, when I call to make a complaint, what's your step to go forward with that? And what's usually the outcome? Paul, do you want Because like I said, I wasted two summers of complaints. Mm -hmm. I lost two, two summers. We, uh, we report those complaints to the facility um, so they can, they can go and, and verify the, the, what the issue uh, of the complaint was and if, if they can find the source of the, of the complaint, um, of the issue that the complaint is made of, um, to try to rectify it. So we, we try to take that complaint and give them the facility a real time indicator of, of what happened and when it happened so they can they can try to fix it. Okay. But why did I have to actually go to Conquer? I had to go over Sharon's I don't like to go above people's heads, but I had to go above Sharon's position to get something done. Well for us we, we prefer you to, to go to the facility as soon as possible. Absolutely. I mean she even came to my house and we met and we discussed you know, I met her, she met with my boyfriend, and we had the discussion, and still, I mean, I had to go over her head. And then, a few months later, a new flare was put in. I mean, it makes you wonder, like, should I even just bypass complaining to the city and just go straight to Concord, you know? Because two years of, two summers I lost. You know, even with my windows open, you could still smell it. And the men would come up in the middle of the night and, I don't smell anything. What do you mean you don't smell anything? You know? Maybe it's in their blood, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but it's just, you know, when this trash raises, the odor's going to be higher. If the flares aren't adjusted, you know, is it going to do anything? You're going to need more flares. What if the paper mill closes for the next 50 years? You know, it's already unstable. Yeah. Then all that gas is going to get cut off and go in the air. That, that's a big concern. I pay 4000 in taxes. I can't even do my barbecue in the backyard. You know? That's all. all right. I could keep going, but all right. <laughs> I had it on. Thank you. I think, Why should we have to that? I think that's a significant comment, and I would prefer that it step up to the microphone and state your name. Because that's a right. concern I've heard like a couple of times. My name's Mo Brado. I live with Natalie on 630 Janelle Street. Yeah. And I've been there for 16 years now. And that place really depreciated the value of my house for one. And another thing, I believe all us people that have wells up there should not have to go pay to have our water tested. You people should pay monthly to have all our wells tested. Because if we drink that water, what's going to happen to us? You know what I mean? You guys do have overflows in storms. Don't say no because I know you do. You know? That place is not good for us for other people. Just to preach it's the Valley Bar House. I pay forty-eight hundred dollars a year for taxes up there, which is bullshit. And I got a dump in my backyard. That's how I feel. Yeah. All right. So. Th thank you for stepping up and um, just. I've heard a number of comments about wells and and groundwater. And to know that part of our review is assessing groundwater impacts. There's a monitoring network at the landfill. Paul Rydell, who's here, that's one of his group's job is for monitoring the groundwater quality 
in the landfills. First of all, it's designed to prevent releases, and then there's also a system set up to detect releases should they occur and trigger action. So there is something that's, that's done, and that is part of our review, um, and definitely those comments will be taken into consideration. Yeah. And, I, and I appreciate you stepping up. That's definitely that's a comment that's on the record that we will definitely consider. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any other comments or people who would like to step up and provide testimony? All right. Hearing none, I will close the hearing. At that? 718. A um, couple thoughts. Even if you had, didn't step up and speak and still want to submit written comments, as I noted, the comment period is open until May 15th. There are instructions at the back table on how to submit and where to submit those written comments. I noticed a couple of people who provided yellow testimony cards, provided a name with no address. That's fine. But if you want to be copied on the final decision, we will need contact information from you. You're welcome to um, put that on the card, or there's a sign-in sheet in the back if you want a copy of the final decision. Right. And, uh, again, thank you for coming. I just wanted to thank Sharon for clarifying that. Thank you for clarifying the, uh, where the waste was coming in from outside of the district. It was on this, you can imagine with Facebook, <laughs> that there's all these stories and everybody's going in eight directions at once. And so it was, it was, it was good to hear definitively where it was and that way I kind of put a lot of that to rest. Thank you.